Welcome to Revolutionary Motion, where we show you tennis from a different perspective. Today's video is about the contact point. I'll give you a couple of exercises that you can do to work on your contact point. For example, if your contact point is too close to you, you want to move it further away, but you just can't find the timing right while you're playing. So you have to break it down to something more simple so that then you can transfer it into your game. So here we have a racket handle. It works because it's really flat on the bottom and if I push it forward, it doesn't move. So, and I can push it pretty hard. Obviously, you don't want to hit uh, full power when you're doing this. So you just have to kind of um, lead your racket into this position and then try to stop it over here. That doesn't mean that you stop the pressure that you give onto the racket. It just means that you don't like completely stop pushing and just hold it next to it as if nothing is happening, right? Like you want to feeling, uh, have a feeling that you're kind of like pushing it through. Obviously, if I lift the racket like this, if I hit it on clean, then this handle will move. So the idea is, first of all, that I, I stand a little bit further wherever I want my contact point to be. So I kind of first measure it up. I measure up my feet. If you have a coach or you have uh, somebody who can help you where they want your contact point to be. And after you measured it, then you take a back swing and you make a light swing, leading your racket forward and then you keep pushing. So did you see this little moment where the racket went a little bit like vibrating? So as you can see, when I lead the racket up to the handle, it vibrates because I hit it and then my strings want to push away, but I, I, I keep leading the racket through. So here, and I keep pushing, keeping my racket in this position. For example, if I don't hold strong and I just hit the handle, my arm can go this way and it's gonna fall or I can get on top of it and it goes this way. And as you see in this case, it doesn't work. Obviously you have to find the pace and power, but the idea is that if you bring your racket completely straight and you keep your wrist strong and in control, you should have no problems with it. So the second thing is, where do you meet the ball? According to how much in front it has to be or behind you. So here, the benefit of this exercise is that if I come too close to the fence and I lead it over here, as you see, I would be hitting behind me, right? So if I go too far forward, then I'll be hitting too far in front of me and here I also can't hit hard. So I would recommend if you're practicing an open stance to bring your right foot, if you're doing a forehand, if you're a lefty, uh, left arm, left foot, right at the level where your racket meets the ball. So again, because this is static, it's very easy to find a way. So if you play in closed stance, for example, then your front foot has to be at the level of your contact point. You can't put your front foot any further because that way you will hit right at the level of your belly button and it's behind you and as you know you have to rotate your body and it's going to be almost impossible to get the ball cross court maybe inside out like the best case scenario. Or if you put your foot way too far back and you'll have to reach in front then also you have no power here. This is the end of the swing. You can't have your contact point over there. So the best position will be if you put your front foot right at the level of the contact, but you, you stay on your back foot here. You, you do the upper body rotation and here you meet the ball. Now let's take a look at this exercise from a different angle. Aside from the distance like more in front or behind you, you also have to find the ball more on your side. I'll show the open stance first. So here I got my foot lined up perfectly, but if I come too close and my elbow is tucked in, I have no space between my body and my arm, I'm not using my full arm length. That is why you have to move further away, 
that you feel comfortable. You like you can practice it with a straight arm or slightly bent, right? If you go too far and you feel like you are reaching again, uh, the control will struggle. The the more the arm is bent, the more control you have, but less power. The straighter the arm, the more power, but less control. If the distance is perfect, you can have control and power all together. But if the ball is way too far, like if your contact point is way too far that you're barely reaching it, obviously you will have lack of power as well. So make sure you find the distance comfortably and remember this distance. So when you will be actually, when you will be playing, you'll have to see that the ball is coming to you and it's exactly this far away so you can practice hitting it like this. So now if you do the same thing with a close stand, the same thing. You have to make sure that the distance between you and your contact point is far enough. All of these exercises go as for your forehand and the same thing for your backhand. Same for the open stance. You find your left foot on the level, find the distance, and here you go with two arms. You make a back swing and you go through. Back swing and you go through. As I said, mainly you practice flatter shots, but like this, you practice to go through the ball without just um, moving off of the ball as soon as you hit it, which also causes a lot of mistakes. So your contact point, you have to stay longer at your contact point. So these exercises, they help you to stay longer on your contact point as long as you keep pushing after you feel some pressure, that like some resistance, right? And the same for the close stance. You aim for your front foot to be on the, uh, at this level. You move a little bit to your, your weight to your back foot and then you meet the ball. Not the ball, but in this case, our target. So obviously, most of you guys can probably not have this kind of opportunity to put a handle that can stay like this. So either you can ask a friend to hold a racket against the pole, and then it's gonna work the same way, or as an alternative, you can use a tennis ball. So now, as for the tennis ball, I, obviously it's way more accessible. I don't recommend to use just the fence without a target because that way you're, you don't really know what you're aiming for. So here it applies the same way as with the handle. The only difference is that it's right at the level of the fence, so you'll have to come a little bit closer to the fence, otherwise you'll always keep hitting it way too in front. Here you cannot go past the fence and hit it behind you. So just make sure that you stand with the hitting foot. So if you're standing in an open stance, you put your foot right next to the fence, you find the distance, and here you go, you meet the ball. The same way you, pre you push through it, here it forgives you a lot because you can't really, like if you miss hit it, you'll just hit the fence. So if you have a ball over here, that way, if you can keep your racket only at the ball without touching the fence with, your, uh, with the frame of your racket, that means you're doing it correctly. If you're, as you hit, you're accidentally hitting the fence, that means that your racket is not approaching the, the ball completely straight and parallel. Obviously, yes, this creates a more flat shot, but it teaches us to go through the ball more and as you go through the ball more you can learn to add spin to that movement so here particularly when you have the ball inside the fence like this i would recommend to have your left foot if you're a right-handed player your left foot right at the fence your right foot a little bit further away and then you meet it here this is a little bit more comfortable to do it or you can just stand in a classic it works the same way with a classic sideways stance just make sure to put your front foot right to the fence then put your weight a little bit on the back foot and then you start your rotation and you meet the ball here if you do these exercises every time before you start playing you will notice 
that it's much easier to find your contact point. It's e you will know what you're looking for, where you want the ball to be, how far away from you. You will feel and see the distance that is necessary for your shots. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe and we'll see you guys soon.